Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson, and I'm joined by Tom Petley, one of my favorite British citizens across the pond from Halo ITSM. Tom, how are you doing? Hi, Mike. Yeah, thanks for the big build up. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the things we wanted to talk about today is some of the new things that have come to Halo. There's new things coming all the time. Um, little things, but this is a big thing. Mm, this is huge. Big one <laughs> it's huge. Halo has released officially their chatbot. It's not a chatbot from a third party. This is built in to the platform. Mm -hmm. Tom, talk to us a little bit about what you guys have done. I know we kind of did a little teaser with folks a little <laughs> while back of what was coming. Yeah, this Where is are big... we here in this first release? This is a big one for us. This is something that we've been working on uh, quite a lot of this year. 2022 has been, it's been a big feature we wanted to launch. Um, yeah, and we've, we've finally kind of got there. We've delivered it now. Um, we did a, first thing, this is, this is kind of the first phase of something that's going to be so important to service service management um, systems um, throughout the world um, and it's going to be one of the, the main channels for for support really um, and so we've launched our chatbot which also includes live chat as well which is really important we think um, because chatbots aren't perfect um, and always going to be able to solve the uh, answer user questions solve them so it's really important that there's a human at the end of the day um, that's able to, to kind of be part of it as well Otherwise, it just leads to kind of frustrations and stuff. I'm sure you've seen it and experienced it yourself, kind of chatbots that really don't help at all. Um, and you just want to speak to someone. So it's really important for us that we had the live chat element as well into it. Um, but yeah, we've kind of hit on all the kind of the, the core areas for us um, in phase one, which is uh, being able to answer questions through kind of knowledge based articles, being able to, to log tickets off the back of it as well. So we can, um, if the articles and the bots not able to resolve it, we can log a ticket for someone to look at. Uh, feeding into the live chat as well is the other big thing that we wanted as part of it. Um, and they're the kind of core areas for us and all the all the logging and the reporting off the back of it as well. So loads of good stuff there. <laughs> You're smiling away there. <laughs> the, I, I, well, when we talked about kind of the teaser a while back, I was kind of excited um, with yeah. what you were showing, the stuff that, you know, hey, we're, 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 we're you know, tidying up a few things here mm. for the official release. Here's what's coming. So I think you have a demo for us to show us a little bit yeah, about what I you guys have done. Well. And I want to key on something you said. This is phase one, right? This is the initial rollout of mm. some of the key features. There's mm. more to come with this feature and its functions. Absolutely. We're already working on phase two already. So although this is <laughs> launching now, we're already on the next bit already. Um, so there's, there's various stuff that Kind of we're working on but also again we've touched this in previous videos and previous um talks just open to feedback as well so if there's other things that people want to see in their bot then this is something that we're yeah we're very actively developing um all the time really um so it's really interesting one right so this is self-service portal and again we talked about this in the past this can all be branded up and these are all widgets you can put whatever widgets you want on so this is going to be branded up to, to whatever organizations using it and the same goes for the chatbot as well. So you, you can put your own icons in there. You can use kind of generic chat bubbles and things like that if, if preferred, but kind of own icons in there, color schemes, kind of wording. It's all configurable, which is again really, really important. Um, so this is the chatbot here. Um, and if you are new to chatbots, um, we've got it set up here just in um, a series of questions at the start and just see little buttons or bubbles. Um, and it's a really great way of kind of getting users used to using a bot. Um, you can have it go straight into a kind of a conversation, start typing, but unless you've got lots of kind of um, historic learning behind that, it can take a bit of time for the system to um, to understand what those questions are meaning and kind of direct it through to the really useful answers. So if you're new to it, we suggest using these kind of bubbles here. I'm going to give an example of a question. Um, I should say you can configure these all. It's just got a drag and drop builder to it. Um, and if anyone's familiar with Halo, it's, it's similar to how the workflow builder works for when you are kind of plotting your, I don't know, your service request process or something like that. It's very, very similar. So I'm just going to ask you a question. And that question could be, how do I fix my printer? Um, 
I chose this question here just because I wanted it to um, do a little look up on some knowledge base articles as well. Um, so it's found some um, some results and this may or may not be useful depending on how we've got it tagged um, and how the kind of keywords in here are. I'm going to say in this example, no, that, that one's not useful. So we're going to keep progressing through. I wanted to give this example because you'll see here, depending on the outcomes of those questions and those answers, you'll see you can configure different uh, responses as well. Um, so I might just go for this time, uh, print. And you'll see here, it's just kind of a different one. So um, you can really kind of tailor those responses and it will learn from each one of them. And this is just a knowledge base article. So we can click into this and it can take us through to that knowledge base article. And yeah, we can use that to help resolve it. And behind the scenes, we're capturing those uh, those results. So we're saying, yes, the bot suggested this, it suggests this knowledge base article, and yes, it solved it as well. So that's basically us doing a resolution without actually any human interaction, which is kind of the holy grail of any, uh, any support desk. Um, so I'm gonna say this time, yes, that was helpful. And you'll see here, now it can get us, to take us down a different route where it can kind of <laughs> prompt for different responses. And you can configure all these responses however you want to. And the other nice thing is here, you can still say, I'd like to speak to someone, which will take you through to the live chat side of things. Or you can have further questions as well. So you can actually almost start a different uh, combination of them, which we're recording multiple solutions for as well. In this case, I'm just gonna say that's everything. And if you want to, you can have this suggest um, some feedback as well. So we can actually say, how how's that bot, kind of how's that experience that bot been? Um, in this case, I've just got it set to that. And I must stress, it's normally a lot quicker than this. Uh, it's my kind of dummy environment's just being a little bit slower than that, so it's normally instant. No, not 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 a problem at all. So, so what you're saying is there's a you've got an AI engine sitting behind there that's learning. Um, so the more things are getting used, it gets better at what it's suggesting. Um, and then uh, uh, we've got a workflow builder. So if we had wanted to, we could have had this based on the interaction generate a ticket and resolve that ticket absolutely so it's, we had wanted it to precisely so as part of the um the process you'll see there's various settings here so um underneath the the profile itself and the profile is important actually because you can have different profiles on different portals or different websites so you may want to have a separate profile for maybe a, an hr bot or a facilities bot or you may even want to put one of these uh, bots on the intranet for example if you want to do it that way um there's there's real kind of use, even the website as well, there's an option to have a public facing bot as well, which isn't, which doesn't require kind of login. It can be a member of the public. Um, so there's loads of different options in there. So we've allowed the multiple profiles. Then within each one, you've then got loads of configuration options that we've made available. This is where we talk about different colors and different kind of messaging um, icons and things like that. And this is the bit about the ticket creation. So in this setup, we've got it set to say, only create it, um, only create, only log a ticket if configured in the flow. So only when you get to certain stages of the process do it. Sometimes some organizations like to log a ticket every single time. So you've always got an actual ticket that's in there, which is again, another setting we put in there. Um, you'll see other options in here um, around feedback as well. So you can have the feedback options enabled if you want to. Then under the bot flow, that's where you have your drag and drop in there, that flow builder. The other thing that we've built in, which is really useful, is the, uh, the ability to import um, example ones. So we're gonna create a library of um, chat flows we can just import straight in. So you don't have to start from scratch every day, every time, sorry. That, that's right. I mean, that, that's something you guys have done for reports and so many other things where um, as things have been built that could be useful to a broad array of customers, mm. uh, they're available for download in the libraries, but the system doesn't have to be jam packed with a whole bunch of stuff that may or may not be useful to you as a, as a customer specifically. Um, That's you the can thing. It, we, yeah. we always have different different ranges of maturity of organizations, different uh, industries kind of that use Halo and not everything's always applicable to everyone. So we like to create different options. So you're not cluttering your view and it's kind of nicely tailored and you can just import them the right, the right flows for you really. Yeah, give you a place to start, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, without having to sit down and, and, and think through every little step. Hey, here's you know, some flows that work for us. We can then go through them and then tailor them to our 
specific needs, whatever they may be. Um, pretty exciting, actually. So, Tom, one of the other cool features uh, that we talked about that's in here is live chat. Let's talk a little bit about live live chat um, because that's not something that is always available in a lot of the bot technologies that are out there. Um, they're just an AI-based chatbot, and that's all they do. There are a few chatbots that are out there that do have live chat capabilities, but it's something you guys brought forward as you know phase one. Um, and felt was it was so important as we talked about. Um, so yeah. Talk to me a little bit about live chat. We 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 consider it kind of one of our kind of phase one requirements. We think it's really really important that uh, that if uh, an end user needs to be able to speak to a person, they can do. There's an option for them to do because otherwise it can just be a really frustrating experience if you're not careful and if you don't quite get the bot like absolutely solving every single scenario. You're gonna get you're gonna get occasions where. Actually, there's not a solution um, that the bot can provide. It needs to speak to a person. Um, so we can't we can't capture everything in a knowledge base article or in a service request. Or um, there are going to be those use cases, those edge cases. So we've got live chat as part of it, um, and there's loads of options around kind of basically taking roles and who's available for live chat, uh, when they're available, which teams can do that, that kind of stuff. Um, and as part of that, you then configure the flow of the bot to say on this scenario, it's going to go through to this team or on this time of day, it'll go through to this team, that kind of stuff. Um, and when you get to the portal here, I, I kind of skipped over it, but there was an option somewhere in here um, to say, actually, I want to speak to someone. Um, and based on that, it's going to open up the live chat where um, it'll open up this screen, basically, and it'll do it in. I'm having to kind of simulate it from my side. We'll put two people in there and we'll start that chat off. So it'll come onto this screen here. Um, so you'll actually get a live chat where you can communicate directly with the end user. And that can also reference tickets as well. So if it is regarding a ticket they're chatting, that will all come through there. And all the history of the chat will actually automatically be put straight onto the ticket as well. So you've got all that history in one place as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so a really That's kind fair. of full circle stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah, I was going to be one. Well, I think one of the first questions is always is there. You, know, you do all this chat. Does it get attached to the ticket? Um, and so you have that that history. Should that issue reoccur and they reopen that incident or they call back in uh, and another technician handles it, they can see, oh, hey, we did these five things before already. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the last thing seemed to fix it, but it didn't. Yeah. So now what are the next things that we need to do? It really helps that uh, workflow um, yeah. uh, as, you're, as you're working through things. There's lots of quite clever things in there as well. So if you do need to get someone else involved from a, maybe one of your resolver groups or something, you can actually add them to the chat as well. So you can add an extra person. It doesn't just have to be one-to-one. -one. So if I'm talking to the user, I need to pull someone in from networks or something, I could, I could drop them in the chat as well, and then they could help us out as well. And again, that transcript is just going to copy, be copied straight onto that ticket, and then you've got the full kind of archive or audit trail. Sorry, of that. That's that's fantastic. So being able to pull other folks in um, to a chat conversation as needed, um, and then you're all working together, and all that chat gets saved um, to the ticket in question. That's phenomenal. Right. <laughs> um, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing more. What what are what are some of the things you guys have planned for phase two? Um, so phase two, there's, so at the moment you see some things like the knowledge base article, you have to click on a link to take it out into, um, to open it on another page. And likewise with creating a, a service request or, or an instant, um, it's going to suggest which one to use, but it's going to, you're going to click on it and it's going to take you off to the form. Um, what we're going to add in is the ability to do all that within the chat. So when it suggests a knowledge base article, it's going to show you in the chat, you'd have to go somewhere else to do it. Um, little things like that. Um, they sound really quite basic and almost like that's a lot of effort to, to kind of do that. But um, actually, from a user experience perspective, if you can just give them all that in one place and um, bring it all into a single chat, then it's, it's, it's amazing. It's really useful. Um, the other part we're doing as well, which is to um, use the same logic, the same engine and apply that across to Teams and Slack as well. Um, so that's another thing we're working on as well. So we do have team spots already um, and Slack bots as well, but just bringing some of this um, this more kind of intelligence through to that, that's, that's really important. That's fantastic. That's really exciting. I know, I know the, the Teams integration is already there, so now we're gonna bring chat to Teams. Um, Precisely, yeah. 
uh, and and Slack for those that use uh, uh, Slack yes. rather than Teams. That's exciting stuff. What what's a what's a timeline you're thinking uh, that we're going to see that? Is that uh, middle of next year? Yeah, I think it'll be earlier than that. I think it'll be Q1 next year that we're looking at. Yeah, so it's all it's all already been worked on. Actually, it's something that we try and keep. I mean, we try and keep moving on some of these bigger, bigger projects behind the scenes, and because um, they they do take a while to do, um, and they're already being worked on now. So I would expect them to be kind of yeah that Q1 uh, 2023 release. That's when we've got it scheduled our side. So as long as we kind of the lines, then we'll be fine. Yeah. Continue, continuing to march forward. Exactly. Um, exactly. That's the exciting thing to see. Well, Tom, thanks for sharing a little bit about the chat bot. Um, there'll be additional videos we'll be doing on some of the other great new features that have come to Halo. Um, of course, customers can go at any time uh, or you know, anybody can go at any time to Halo's website to see the roadmap. Um, join the new community. Um, Information is available there as well. And you can actually um, uh, you know, log your own uh, re requests of things that you'd like to see. Um, so it's always a pleasure, Tom. Thanks for getting with me today. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Um, hit ExcaliburData.com. You can go out there and sign up for your own free trial of Halo ITSM uh, and uh, reach out to our team. We'd be happy to get together with Tom, uh, do a one-on-one -on -one demo and, and cover all of your questions. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all again soon on another episode of the Excalibur Data Systems Roundtable Tech Talk. Thanks, everyone.